Okay, so I want to touch on a report from Canada. A few days ago, the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi made a visit to Ottawa. Now, that's an important point about what I'm going to talk about. This event that I'm going to discuss, or situation I should say, was in Ottawa, okay? Not Beijing, Ottawa, the Canadian capital. Anyway, um, a Canadian journalist, Amanda Connolly, um, put a question to Wang Yi about human rights, um, specifically about the disappearance of Hong Kong booksellers, which remains very, um, let's say, it's a big mystery. We don't know what's happened to these people, but they were critics of the Communist Party in China. So, you know, take whatever speculation you will from that. But the point is, it was a completely valid question. Anyway, um, Wang Yi was clearly annoyed, um, and that's interesting actually because very often communist officials um, are quite good at keeping their composure. They're always arrogant, but they're good at keeping their composure. Okay, uh, on this occasion, he looked quite rattled, and he said, "I think your question is full of prejudice, and uh, this is arrogant, and." Uh, you know, he went into the usual line about uh, you don't understand Chinese culture and this is the ancient Chinese civilization, all that sort of stuff. This is the same exact line that the communist regime uses every single time they're questioned about this. And it's utterly phony, utterly phony. He was talking about human rights being enshrined in the Chinese constitution. I, I'm not that familiar with the Chinese constitution and we need to have a look at it, but whether they are, I mean, if they are, it's sort of irrelevant because the CCP has utterly disregarded them. This has been a party that has ruthlessly crushed dissent. Yesterday was actually the 27th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown. They are profoundly dishonest. Um, they have ruthlessly crushed dissent. They have been guilty of torture, mass pogroms, mass death. Um, this goes on and on and on. This party has probably more blood on its hands than any other political party in human history. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I'm neutral in this. I have contempt for the CCP. I have contempt for their sheer bloody arrogance. What annoys me about this is that he was accusing the journalists of being arrogant, right? But this was in Canada. Now, Canada is a democracy. Canada values freedom of the press, freedom of speech. Importantly, in this case, the government of Justin Trudeau, and this is a good side of this, has stood up to the Chinese and they have expressed dissatisfaction. Now, that might sound like polite language, but I think that's actually a lot of the time Western governments, I think, are way too soft with China. On this occasion, the Trudeau government is standing up to China and saying, wait a second, you can't bully our journalists. And that's what he's doing. He said that Stefan Dion, the Canadian foreign minister, has expressed um, dissatisfaction, presumably with the Chinese embassy. I am very pleased that the Canadians are standing up to this arrogance. In the end of the day, this journalist was doing her job, okay? And the Chinese can't allege bias, and by the Chinese I mean the Chinese government, because Western journalists, or sorry, Western governments are scrutinised all the time. All the time. So if this was a case that Canadian journalists never criticise the Canadian government and they only criticise the Chinese government, you would understand the, the bias. But the point is, it is perceived as bias because the arrogant communist regime believe that they are above criticism. Just because there is no free media in China doesn't mean they can bully foreign journalists into silence. She was doing her job. I remember the same situation happened. Um, I'm not sure if it was Wang Yi or one of his subordinates, but I remember a British journalist, um, Peston, I uh, forget the guy's first name, Nick Peston, I think. Anyway, he was having an interview with Ida Wang Yi, one of his subordinates, and um, he was asking tough questions. Inevitably, all the Chinese nationalists got online and were attacking the British bias and bias BBC and all the rest of it. There is a very, 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 very obvious arrogance coming from the Chinese doctrine right now. Um, 
I get it. I understand history for for years. China was humiliated and all of that. But in the last sort of five years, sort of the end of the Hu Jintao era and throughout the Xi Jinping era, Chinese foreign policy has been modelled on arrogant nationalism. There's a situation in the South China Sea where they're basically throwing their weight around and saying we can do whatever we want. We're going to bully smaller countries and we're going to blame it all on America. Um, and we see this every time journalists do their job. Um, it's a good thing this was in Canada, otherwise that journalist probably would have been roughed up. I wouldn't be surprised if she would have had her camera smashed. She probably would have been arrested for threatening state security. It's fundamentally, the Communist Party of China are cards. They cannot face criticism. They're extremely thin-skinned, extremely sensitive, and extremely arrogant. And I have to say, I'm utterly sick of it. Um, I'm not making this video, by the way, to start an argument or to get into confrontation. I don't enjoy confrontation, but I am making it because there needs to be voices that stand up to these people. And by these people, I'm talking about the Chinese government. I'm not talking about the Chinese. Um, you know, it's always a difficult issue for me because I'm not xenophobic. There's many, many things I like, even love about China. The Communist Party is not one of them. And unfortunately, the average Chinese nationalist online can't seem to differentiate the two. So if a foreigner criticizes the Chinese government, they take that to be an attack on China. And unfortunately, Communist Party propaganda has aided in this because they associate in the public mind criticism of themselves as being akin to criticism of China the country. And um, that's really unfortunate. It is ironic, by the way, that they constantly talk about China's ancient civilization. It was the very same regime that destroyed a good part of that civilization during the Cultural Revolution when they vandalized and smashed up uh, Ming Dynasty temples and so on. They have done more damage to Chinese civilization than any outside force. So I'm so sick and tired of their arrogance and their hypocrisy. Just because journalists in China don't have freedom to scrutinise the government doesn't mean they can bully foreign journalists. And I'm very pleased that the Can Canadian government is having some backbone in this issue and standing up for this woman because she was only doing her job, okay? Um, the questions, in my opinion, were completely legitimate. If he doesn't like his questions, tough. You know, in China, Communist Party officials get a completely free ride from the media because that's the way it's designed. Um, the media in China is 100% controlled by the Communist Party, so there is no free media. Um, the only sort of form of scrutiny whatsoever is internal. It's from the party mechanism, and very often that's designed basically to take out political opponents. Um, people will say, oh, you're very anti-China, you're very biased towards China. I give credit where credit's due. Now, what Wang Yi said about... Oh, the, the population has risen. We've lifted hundreds of millions out of poverty, etc. None of that excuses the human rights abuses and none of that excuses this idea that you can shout down foreign reporters. You know, Western governments are scrutinized all the time, all the time. So what the hell makes the Chinese government think that they're above criticism? How arrogant. And for him to call her arrogant? What's the basis for that? She was doing her job. Where's the arrogance? You know, um, I hope the Canadians really hold their ground on this. And I hope they, I wouldn't go so far as, say, putting trade deals on hold or anything like that. But it is important that they stand up for their journalists. And I wish the British government would do the same thing. Unfortunately, ever since we had that trade agreement, um, I think it was last year, George Osborne and the Cameron government has basically said we're going to bend over backward for the Chinese. As a British citizen and as someone who's pro-democracy, I'm troubled by that. Um, you know, I understand that trade is important and I understand that world leaders have to be dim diplomatic. But journalists should have the freedom to do their job and... I really, really hope that behind the scenes, David Cameron is also saying, look, you cannot bully our journalists, especially not in the UK. It's one thing if this is happening in China, which does, that's bad enough. But 
for Wang Yi to try and shout down this woman in Canada. Who's being arrogant? You know, it's not in China, it's in Canada. He is in another country. This is just typical of the Xi administration. We can do whatever we want, whenever we want. That is their attitude, and I'm so sick of it. And the Chinese nationals who want to defend this behavior, all I would say is consider the things that I have said. I've got no respect for your your nationalistic rants and your threats and your phony victimhood mentality. You know, this is what I was getting at the other day. When that racist Chinese commercial was aired, the attitude from a lot of Chinese nationals was, oh, Westerners are so sensitive. Who's being sensitive now? You know, the Chinese government is asked a tough question and they turn around and say, oh, stop picking on us. You're prejudiced, blah, blah, blah. They have no right to be pontificating about anything. They're some of the biggest bullies in the world. And frankly, I think their attitude is disgusting. It's basically, we could do whatever we want, whenever we want, and we will shout down anyone who dares question us. So I'm very pleased that the Canadian government has spoken up. Personally, I would have loved it. I don't know if it was Stefan um, at that press conference, but I would have loved it if he addressed a question as well and said politely but firmly, Mr. Yi, you are in Canada now, and in this country, we have a free press. Frankly, I would have liked to see a public rebuke, because behind closed doors is kind of almost overly polite. The Chinese government needs to know that people are going to stand up to them. In China, they have an iron grip. They can do what they want. They shouldn't be able to, but that's the situation. Outside China, they need to know that they can't do what they want, and that is basically their attitude. Um, and you know, this is nothing to do with Canadian foreign policy. Like I said, Western journalists criticize and scrutinize Western governments all the time. The problem is the thinking of so many Chinese nationalists, they seem to be incapable of looking at reason and looking at the situation. Their mindset is, oh, Western journalists criticizes Chinese government, and they equate that with attacking China as a country. It's not the same thing at all. Governments and countries are not the same thing. So, frankly, I'm rather pissed off right now. I am so sick of seeing this. It's the same excuses every time. But the good outcome from this is that the Canadian government, and full respect to Justin Trudeau for doing this, um, because he doesn't have to. To be quite honest, it would be a lot easier for Western leaders to sort of just go along with China and say, okay, we can't damage trade, but let's just agree with everything they say. It is the right thing to do to stand up for Western principles. That includes freedom of the press. So I'm pleased that the Trudeau government is being assertive on this. I'm pleased they are standing up for this journalist. Um, and, you know, I, if I was a Canadian government, I would be using some pretty strong words. I would say, back off. This journalist has a right to do her job. She was doing her job in Ottawa. Okay, if you don't like the questions, tough. You know, he has a right to respond to it. No one is stopping him having a voice. So the idea that this is picking on China is a lot of crap because, you know, he he can have a voice, unlike dissidents in China, unlike freelance journalists in China, not that there are any, but the arrogance is just astounding. And this is the same attitude in the South China Sea. It's basically, we can do whatever we want, whenever we want. You know, China's a popular country in some ways. People around the world have great respect for China's ancient heritage, its tourist attractions. Um, It's a great country to visit. I speak as someone who's been there. It's a fascinating country. It's a great country to visit. Um, For the most part, Chinese people are very hospitable and welcoming. But one thing virtually no one outside China respects is the incredible arrogance of the Chinese government. And okay, it's not the only arrogant government in the world. Most governments have a certain degree of arrogance, but they really are professional at it because they ruthlessly crush any dissent. They believe that they're above criticism. You know, um, Western governments may be arrogant, but at least they don't try to silence the press. Um, It just makes me really angry, to be quite honest. So, final few words. No, I'm not anti-China. And yes, I will be um, open-minded enough to give praise where it is due. So, for example, yes, it's a good thing that hundreds of millions have been lifted out of poverty. Yes, it's a good thing that she is tackling corruption. 
But that doesn't mean that areas where there is legitimate criticism will not be said, because who do these people think they are? It just makes me so mad that they just think they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. Say what you want about Western governments, but at least, at least, Western media has, on some level, a space to criticise them. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if a journalist asks, I'll give you an example, the other night, the EU referendum in Britain, members of the public, members of the public, and and the journalist um, Faisal Islam was asking the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom some very direct, very tough questions. Personally, I actually think in the West it can go too far. But the point is, they had the freedom to do that. So the, uh, that young woman in the crowd who was asking Cameron tough questions, even insulting him, she isn't going to be dragged away to one of the black jails and tortured, as would happen in China. And that's a good thing. Okay, I don't agree with what she said. I thought she was pretty rude, actually. But the point is, the freedom of expression, the freedom of the press is really sacrosanct. That doesn't mean the press is above criticism. So I'm not saying that Western news agencies are themselves above criticism, but they should have the freedom to do their job. And it's good that the Canadian government is standing up to Beijing on this occasion. I hope that's consistent. Um, I think Trudeau is starting to show his grit. You know, maybe I underestimated the man. A while back, I thought he was a bit of a, frankly, weak liberal. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe I was wrong about that. And I, I'm very, I think this is very refreshing. I just wish the British government would do the same thing because the Chinese basically see the British as a pushover right now. That's how I see it. And it's a great pity. Trade is important, but we cannot, we cannot sacrifice our values to give Beijing what it wants. I think that would be wrong. I'm not saying be confrontational for the sake of it. And I'm not saying tell them what to do. But we have to defend journalists doing their job. Um, final word, if you're a Chinese nationalist and you're not happy with what I'm saying, frankly, I don't give a damn. You need to understand this is not China. I'm not speaking in China. The journalist was not speaking in China. You can be as arrogant as you want in China. But when you're in other countries, you'll damn well show some respect. And that means respecting values. So Wang Yi and the communist regime can preach all at once about respecting Chinese culture. Um, but when they're in other countries, they just need to try and show some humility. I'm so sick of it.